That's that's essentially why we're here. We wanted to just talk to everyone and get feedback on it. Well, I've got a feeling you're going to have a question. <laughs> are, you, are you going to be serving alcohol after two o'clock? No, no. We have, we have to stop serve. We have to cut off the alcohol about 1:40 a.m. last call, and then everything is good. Let me just jump in on that. That's California law. So, regardless of what entertainment permit you have, every bar, club, restaurant, any establishment serving alcohol in the state of California cannot serve past two a.m. That's not going anywhere anytime soon. Could you talk about other clubs in the area that have this 4 a.m. opening? Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. So there's there's a club a block away. Um, one of our main competitors are called Mezzanine, um, which is another very well run nightclub. Um, their capacity is about I think 1,100. It's much larger than us. We're 200 capacity. Um, they have a 4 or 5 a.m. license, um, and they're they're a block away. So is there more than that? Or there is. There's, so, there's Club well, 6, there's the end up, there's also clubs that are a little bit further away, but, but, are, they, but they all have they, they all have this full, this capacity to go to 4 a.m. Yeah, so our main competitor would be Mezzanine, Public Works, uh, Vessel, um, uh, Mighty. Mighty. Those are really our main competitors. So it's kind of like great. Well, it Mezzanine, Mez, Mezzanine is a one block radius. Uh, club six is right across the street. Um, the other clubs are further away, but but that that's not necessarily the issue. The proximity to where we're at is more than if you know. But does that mean you want people to come to your destination? Well, it means that if 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 we're if there's a show that we're trying to book, the Public Works, which is in the mission, is trying to also book it, and then the the booking agent who's looking at the show might say, well, we, our artist is going to want to play past 2 a.m. Because what happens is if, if an artist is performing at, at, a more, at a late night club like this, 
And it's what, what, here's what happens, they turn on, at 1.45, we have to turn on the lights and simultaneously kick everyone out of the club. And it makes, it's just really uncomfortable for everybody, it's not a good experience. Uh, you know, the, the other aspect too is that, you know, if you look, really look at what you're doing, you're, you're, you have last call at around 1.40, and you, everyone's, everyone's drinking, they're done drinking, and now you have to basically push everyone out of your club simultaneously on the street, instead of, you know, saying, yeah, we, we stopped serving liquor, now you can stay and hang out and drink water, sober up a little bit, and, and slowly filter out of the venue. So, so that's all you serve is just water um, after anything water. not alcoholic. Once, once again, by law, yeah. you can't serve. I understand that. Yeah. But I'm asking what else you serve after water. Water, water Red Bull, juice. So soda. you have to go to any food. No, we're not. We're not a restaurant. We're not a restaurant. We're not. We're not. We technically our license is 48. So the 47 is the one that that offers food. Like, we actually have peanuts and you know, I mean, not, not, a, not at that hour. We, uh, Typically, we like early on. We can serve bar snacks, but you're right. We could potentially we could serve, serve bar snacks towards the end of the night, maybe to help with that process. What, what I'm going to you since you're uh, Clearly, the, the issue about if you're getting permit, uh, permission, is gonna, the, the, the thinking is going to be on the impact on public safety. Yep. So what, what are your thoughts about the pros and cons of being, of being open these extra two hours? In terms of safety within a community that already has quite a few safety issues Absolutely. as it is. Do you, do you want to speak on that? How yeah. do you address that? Um, two different things. <coughs> I'm head of security, and Jose Lou Gordon was back there, manages or oversees the SROs. I actually run one of the SROs on 6th Street. So I share your concern when I first went through there. I can tell you, with the police patrol that we have going through there, they have changed the neighborhood. Anyone that's really been on 6th Street, and my joke is I'm on the corner of 6th Street admission between five and six days a week. I see a lot of it has changing. We make sure that we get our patrons up into cabs. One of the advantages we had favor before with a, a one day permit that when you're open at three or four in the morning, we're one of the few places up there, we do get a lot of cabs come through there. We get people up in the cabs. We've got a couple of convenient places where people to park at. For us, as well as the club, but for me, security is number one to me. In any club, that's always been number one. And we run it very well. We have a full staff up there for that. Um, if someone comes in the club, but they want to come in, we think that they're too drunk, we won't let them in the club. If we have someone who maybe had too much to drink, we won't get them in the cab because it is a safety issue. And one thing about a club that so far I brag about, we've been open seven months. In seven months, we have never called the police to our club. They never came to our club. Even the captain that was here would have told you, we don't have those problems. We don't. And because I also live on 6th Street, I've been able to talk to what I call a lot of the locals, because I'm now one of the locals. And, you know, they get it that this is a business, and we find that we're working with them, and you have to do that in the community. We work with them, we find out we've had less troubles here now. We had problems with a club at 181 Eddy Street uh, that uh, <coughs> They had uh, buses from outside the city bringing customers in, and it was a very rowdy crowd. Uh, are you going to have bus? No, we're going to have no party buses at all. It's, it's, all it's actually part of our conditions on our license to have no party buses, and for us, it's not worth the trouble. What 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 is the focus of your clientele? What what kind of uh, what, what, what? We actually have two focuses. So, because we, we open at 5:30 p.m. seven days a week, so we're open happy hour. So our focus is to pull in everyone from the surrounding area to bring people in for happy hour. So that's kind of an earlier night crowd. Then the later night crowd is it, it, it depends on what the entertainment is that we're booking. It's a mix of DJs and live music. Uh, but we what we don't do is we don't book hip hop. We don't book we don't book, work with artists that are basically going to pull on a bridge and tunnel type of crowd, a party bus type of crowd. We're very young. Yeah. So, our, I mean, our, our crowd's a little, little bit of an older, older demographic because we're a little... Like well, jazz and things like that. We do, we do live jazz, we do rock and roll, we do dance music. Full uh, blues. It's you're gonna, okay, you're going to have a dance party. We already we're, have, we already have, have one. Yeah, we already have one. So we have, we have a full place of entertainment license already. 
this so, extension to our world. Yeah, we want we want to, we want the ability to to <coughs> be able to stay open later on nights that we choose. To yeah, stay I see open. a lot of clubs open that up for so what we have for a while. But the, it, it makes sense to you guys if not selling alcohol from two to four. So you you think this gonna be any good business for you? Well, here's 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 why. I think it's why a very good question. Like so five six o'clock. <coughs> And it's sent over to seven thirty, one bit earlier. So, so the reason or, why it's or, important. Or probably come at night time. Do you think so or no? Well, so so this is why it's important because you're right. We don't make money between two and four a.m. because we have to keep our staff on longer. We're not selling alcohol, so we, we make a little bit of money selling water and soft drinks. Yeah, but but, but expensive. Laura, how about it's expensive. He's Brilliant. expensive. Trust me. Yeah. Ten to fifteen dollars an hour is adding it up. Yeah. yeah, but but what it, money so that's why it's that's why we would never be open seven days a week that way. It's just if there's a, a show that we're, that the, the booking agent is saying we will do the show at your venue if you can stay open until four a.m. Then we have we need the ability to do that just to get the show and get the people in there. Otherwise, they'll go to another venue, and we'll lose that. Level the, the, the playing field for us. Do you think that ha that having uh, that extra two hours is would be positive for your customers? You know, if they're sober up, and, so they can get home without any. Most definitely, because instead of having to push everybody out on mass at two a.m., we give them another two hours that they can gradually disperse and gradually without serving any alcohol. Without serving any alcohol. That'd be better for the community as well. Absolutely. One, one thing is you brought out, like you said, at 145 to 2 o'clock, we're pushing out 100 or 200 people. Whereas between 2 to 4, you might be pushing out 10 here, 15 there. So it's a lot more easier coming out than, like you said, don't be, you know, 200 people out. In the One of the problems we <coughs> had with this other establishment was the fact that people come outside to smoke and things like that, and they cause a lot of problems. Uh, do, you, do you have any solution? Yes. Um, up until last week, what we actually did is we actually had a roped off area. We found out that that is illegal. You can't rope off the sidewalk. So what we do now is we have our security team out there, and we just have you know ask people to move closer into the side of the wall so we can keep the walkway really clear. And if we see them getting loud, we tell them you know be curious of our neighbors. And we find out just talking to my dad and asking how they're doing. And one other point on that is that we're, we're fortunate because. On the Mission Street side of our business, there's no residential there at all. So we have everyone go about 30 feet down the sidewalk, and as if anyone wants to go out and smoke, they do it there. I may have a little support for you guys. <laughs> I have two businesses <coughs> on 6th Street. They bring a more positive crowd than anything on 6th Street. It's not, it's a high brow crowd, giving youth a place to go to between two and four instead of going out and doing things that are not right. Yeah. It'd be much better for them to be someplace where they can get entertained and stay out of trouble. I believe it. It's a good thing. Are you going to drop the age limit within the time of time? Absolutely. Or, no. It's still 21. Yeah, yeah. Really? yeah I, like, I like hip hop some of it. But I'm kind of, I understand why you would do that. The crowd comes to the elements you're bringing with it. I'm a hip hop. I like hip hop as well, but it just. It's too problematic, so we have to start with it. So it sounds great for you, the idea of you know, making it running smoothly and that sort of thing, and you can sit there and just be back and chill out, you can chill the camp for things and let it clear, that's kind of a good idea. Serving them with water and that sort of thing, and offering the camp service, that's awesome. They were in a good crowd, so they did. I, I, I have a question. Don't make this up, this is what I'm about to say. <laughs> Given the dynamic of 6th Street. And if you guys stayed open to the door, politically, politically correct way to <laughs> say it. <laughs> um, as, as, as we know on 6th Street, um, there are, there's a certain, there's a population there that has used 6th Street as their living room because they live in some of the confined quarters. Bars open there from two to four. What my concern would be is that this population or this group may stay aroused and stay up later, maybe 
positive <coughs> issues for that particular street. Not, not my, my crowd. My yeah, yeah, this crowd. Totally different crowd. Yeah. Yeah. But you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to try to be a lot of people live in my practice. Respond, respond to that. I think totally that different crowd that you're talking about yeah. doesn't really come here. No, we're not coming near them. Because of the security. Because we're there. Because of the security. And then that guy right for the black shirt red tie. He's no nonsense. <laughs> no, I just I just worry about that because like when you look at what what that shooting three years ago, just a couple of blocks from yes. there, where that tourist was just going right. out roaming. And so what I'm just kind of concerned about is you might have tourists that are staying at hotels here, bunch of location, and then decide because they can't get a cab, decide to kind of walk back up to their hotel. And I don't think that that's such a great idea. I think that's a, a very valid concern, and the reason that I can speak from experience is because as owners and as managers, we're there practically every night. So we do see what's going on on those streets and in the surrounding area. Um, towards 4 in the morning, 3, 4 in the morning, things do start to quiet down in that area. Um, there is a, a livelier block of time. That's not necessarily one of them. But when we opened Monarch, security was always going to be paramount. And instead of what potentially other places do, which is just cut the crowd loose, let them out and let them basically figure it out on their own, we knew that we had to take a few steps further with our security, making sure that if somebody needs to get to a cabin, if somebody needs to get walked to a car, if security is not available, then a staff member will take care of that. Um, and then also even doing something simpler, which is, you know, maybe you don't want to go down that street, you want to go down Mission. Or if you know you can get cabs here. It's really trying to be proactive with the crowd, not only in terms of dispersing them, but dispersing them in a responsible fashion that I think does the best that we can, or does the best that we can do to sort of mitigate the people on 6th Street maybe praying or taking advantage of that crowd. So we're very conscious of it. Pray, yes. Yeah. 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 One thing too, when we first came in there, I had to admit, I don't even think we could have flagged down a cab if we jumped in front of it. <laughs> yeah, I, don't I mean, the cab, if you flagged it, it's going to be checked on. And little by little, I can say for the last six, seven months, we now have cabs that sit parked waiting to take us. If they see it's a different clientele, they see, you know, it's a lot more different. And that's, you know, it's a win-win for us. You know, if we know that we're getting out a certain time, we're busy, I'm quick to call Yellow Cab. It's all seven threes. It's like, you know, can you send four or five cabs? Um, they have food witness up there. So it's like, trust me, we have a lot of it. And like you said, safety is number one for us. Right. And then you have the site of care and lift that's also entering the market within the next couple of months. It hasn't been announced yet. I actually went to one of these companies that are located in the south of the market. Is that where they have the bike? Like they drive your car and they bike home or something like that? No, 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 no. This is a, um, it's actually a car pooling service, so it's actually cheaper than jumping into a cab. Okay. And, and literally it's based on donations. So if somebody is kind of integrated and need to ride home, a suggested donation is, is, is suggested, but they don't have to necessarily pay that. Much. And one other point I'd like to make briefly is that we, we actually have been doing after extended hours events at Monarch already. I think we've done about eight of them since we opened. And doing that, we pulled into you know one night for minutes for each event, right. and we haven't had any issues. And we also found that it's it's a, it's actually easier to get cabs after like two a.m. because they're at two a.m. is a big everyone's trying to get a cab. So when, you, when you're open a little later, it's much easier to get a cab for people. So have the police laid in on this yet uh, in the Tenderloin Station? <coughs> what's it's, 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 actually, it's actually Captain Works. And, uh, what, is, what is their response? So, so he, he, his, his initial response was, we, we'd like you guys to wait here before you do this. And then now after after you know, dialoguing with him, like, yeah, you know, we think it's, we think it's basically okay. Um, we're going to talk about it a little bit more. I'm meeting with him tomorrow night. I'm actually, um, he asked me to join his uh, community advisory board, so I'm going to that we're tomorrow night's our first meeting. So, I mean, but the, the police are generally su are cautiously supportive of pretty much everything that we're doing. Yeah. And, and I also think with them, what they had dealt with, you know, originally, um, with the previous incarnation of, of that venue, they had a lot of problems. And I think when they first encountered us, they were like, well, you're saying all the right stuff, but how do we really know? And the proof is in the pudding. You know, we told them what we were going to do. We told them that we were Try and be a, a more positive force in that location. And one of the greatest compliments that I think all of us got, because we go and host the South of Market meetings where Captain Orcs is, and 
the last thing he said when, when Monarch came up was that we were a breath of fresh air on the corner of Sixth and Mission. And if that's coming from the captain of Southern Station, I would like to think that we're doing something right. Sounds good. Oh yeah, so I just wanted to add our organization, our the board of directors for Central Market voted and approved and supported a letter, provided a little letter of support. Um, and uh, we haven't heard or seen any issues um, you know, since you've been there. And I think um, certainly it's helping to revitalize that stretch of um, Sixth Street. Absolutely. Are you, are you gentlemen all partners in it? He's my partner. <coughs> So uh, we have a uh, we have an award here for uh, Marvel. 